So what are we doing? Welcome to the first ever episode of the Existential Stoic and or other names if we decide <laughs> to change it later. If we're we with, change the name later, we will. It'll be great. With Randy and Danny. Hello. Hey. I am a doctor of veterinary medicine and Danny is a Nietzschean scholar. And uh, today we're going to be answering some of the most popular queries by state on Google in relationship to... Uh, <laughs> Spirituality, spirituality, Life. and philosophical questions. Yeah, and it's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty interesting if you look at these things because depending upon the state, they uh, they all have different interests. They really do, actually. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, like for instance, Alabama asks, "What is love?" California asks, "Why do I want to die?" Well, they ask. Well, they also ask. Alabama asks, "What is love?" and how to study the Bible. Right. That makes sense. <laughs> Which does make sense. Yeah. They get married at 16 and they... And then study the Bible. All right, we're good. We're starting off with some awesome generalizations. <laughs> so to... to Wild our, generalizations about to, states. Wow. To our first drop listener from Alabama. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. So this is pretty interesting. I guess we'll read through some of them and then chat yeah. about whichever one's seen the most interesting. So, Alabama, what is love? How to study the Bible? Makes sense. Alaska asks a lot about Sikhism, Taoism, Zodiac, faith, and Scientology. I can even pronounce that one. Yeah. Wow. Baha'i. Oh, yeah, yeah Baha'i faith. Yeah. Wow, Alaska is asking some serious questions, though. Yeah. They're kind of out there. I always heard that people, everybody who lives in Alaska wants to live there because most of them yeah. actually had to move there. Well, that would make sense, too, right? Because it's hard to live in Alaska, I would imagine, because yeah. it's... It's got to be either you're living on your own right more mm -hmm. or less, or you're yeah. relying on your own more yourself yeah. more because you're kind of like far away yeah. from things anyway. Yeah, it's interesting to go with the the more uh, esoteric pursuits. They Ari really do. <laughs> Arizona says how to read palms and pantheism. Interesting. Uh, Arkansas, what's the meaning of life and why do we dream? Why do? What is the meaning of life? I think it's forty-two. Is it? Yeah. It is. <laughs> Hitchhiker's Guide? Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. It is 42. And apparently there's a speculation on that's why there's 21 million Bitcoin, because that's half of 42. Really? Yeah, that yeah. was a theory. It's a theory. But you know what's funny? It's in that kind of situation. It's like, I always like, I actually always respected, um, who was that? Was it Arthur T. Clarke? No. No. What was the guy that wrote that? What? The Hitchhiker's Guide. No. Clark is different. That's somebody yeah, else. Yeah, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Why can't I remember his name? And I feel bad now. Yeah. Um, we'll look it up later. Yeah. Anyway, but, uh, oh, here, I found it already. That was fast. Douglas Adams. Yes, damn it. You got yeah. it right before I fucking found it. Anyway, yeah, as soon as I stopped thinking about it, it came. That's what happens all the time. I was going to say, what's interesting, what I liked about his answer, 42, is that it kind of points to the meaninglessness of the question. Right? Do you know what I mean? Like the answer doesn't it doesn't matter what the answer is because you'll find the meaning. You'll you'll make that answer meaningful anyway if you think it is the answer to the meaning of life. You will make it meaningful and that's the whole point. We make it meaningful. Yeah. Right? So it doesn't matter what answer you give as long as somebody can if they think it is the answer, they'll make it meaningful and then they've effectively solved the problem. Yeah. Yeah, like when I read The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, I never I'd never considered that that was actually the answer. But maybe that is actually the answer. What else would it be, though, right? I mean, like, if, if you, like... I don't know. I've been thinking about this a lot, too. Because if you look at, like, all of human, really, social organization and, like, we all want something, right? We want to have an answer. We want to have a purpose. We want to know why we're doing what we're doing. And, like, we want to be able to, like, look at our actions and be like, yeah, that was right or that was good. And, like... If we don't have, I think it's just harder nowadays because we don't all necessarily kind of like agree to a system that mm -hmm. provides those answers. So I think we just have to find that we have to make it meaningful, right? Mm -hmm. We have to make our own meaning, maybe. Maybe that works. Yeah. But I liked his answer, anyway. Yeah, I mean, that's a great answer. Mm. Uh, why do we dream? That's an interesting one, too, from Arkansas. Are these both from Arkansas? Yeah, yeah, they're obviously very deep thinkers. Yeah, we would, would have thought. <laughs> Since we're generalizing about people, I we are wildly. That, but yeah, we'll continue to generalize they have wildly. The they have the Clinton <laughs> Library there, so they could obviously do a bunch of research. Is that? Oh shit, he's from yeah, Arkansas, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, I forgot about that. Mm -hmm. That's true. 
Yep. Oh, I guess their library would. I never <laughs> even thought about that. Yeah. I never even. It never dawned on me that the fucking president's library would go where they were born. That makes sense. Or where they're from. It does make sense, I guess. Sense. Anyway. California yeah. has two interesting questions. Kind of both related, but on opposite sides of the spectrum. Why do we have to die? And why do I want to die? It's like yeah. half of the people are asking based on I don't want to die. And the other people are saying I want to die. I mean, the first one, though, like, um, why do we have to die is like, I mean, I guess we don't. Right. I mean, scientists are trying to figure out how the how to do that thing with the cells so they don't age or whatever. Yeah. Which would take that, but I mean, at the same time, isn't that like the point of life? But it, yeah, if you don't die, you theoretically can't live. Yeah, because you don't, life is, life is an end and a, it's an, a beginning and an end. Yeah. And without that, you don't have any real, I mean, if you knew you would live forever, you have no real motivation to live, which is kind of the problem, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's like uh, Tuck Everlasting. Yeah, right. The story right. about the guy who lived forever, it wasn't a very interesting book. When I was when I was young, <laughs> it's also the problem. Forever. <laughs> when I was young, I thought it would have been really cool to live forever, but I'm 37 now, and it feels like I've lived forever. You're only 37. Yeah. Shit. I'm yeah. older than you. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm 38. Anyway, but yeah, you know, it. Well, isn't that funny? When you get older, though, you don't want to necessarily live forever anymore. Because I think because you suffer enough, and you're like, ah. Maybe you suffer. You're right. Maybe you do suffer enough, and you also realize that like. Like, maybe it's also because, like, you know when you're younger and, like, you talk to older adults or, like, people that you conceive of as older but they're maybe not that old, maybe 20s or 30s, and you're like, man, I'll never think like them. Why do they all think, like, young kids are goofy or weird or have bad, you know, weird ideas? And then you get older and you realize that's just what happens Mm because it's like, you know, you've been alive long enough. And maybe, like, everything would change so much that it would be hard to, like... Because even a lot of the immortal-esque characters and stories ultimately do die like you know vampires and stuff like that they're long lived they're not immortal though mm-hmm. they're not like live forever right right they can die and they often do they just have very long lives and that's different because it still has a, an end and you know a beginning yeah. and an end yeah. or a way out maybe i kind of like the the thought of from whence you came like out of the tau we come we're formed and then we go back to it or like out of the universe we're formed because we're all basically stardust if you look at it scientifically yeah yeah or, all energy right? or the spiritual way yeah. you know we're all formed from the universe it's funny how. it's such a common view too in like pre-socratic philosophy and stuff like if you look at like the the uh, Milesians uh, dailies and stuff I mean it's interesting because it is that idea that like we come from something and we have to return to it in the recycling process right mm-hmm. everything has to recycle otherwise we'd run out of stuff yeah that is interesting yeah Hmm. So Colorado, a bunch of hippies out there, they search for the heart chakra. <laughs> is that all it? That was that's, their main That's search. what it is. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then uh, Connecticut is existentialism. Which is awesome. Which, go figure. Good for them. Right? Yeah. Should we define it? Nah. Uh, I wouldn't even know how to. It's just the title of this podcast. I know. I would call it an attitude, I guess. Yeah. Delaware is Pentecost. Florida, what is my life purpose? And I've lived in Florida for a few years, and it seems like <laughs> everyone down there is trying to figure out what their purpose is. <laughs> and failing miserably. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Again, for wild generalizations. Yeah. But. I, imagine, I imagine the other question they ask most frequently on Google, how to drive a car, didn't make it because it's not a spiritual pursuit. <laughs> that's but. true. We did, we did target spiritual pursuits, so that's why we are getting these questions. But mm-hmm. what is my life's purpose? That's a tough question, too, because that's like, you know... I guess that's different than meaning, though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it changes all the time, and... Yeah. Well, they're both plastic, right? I mean, both of them should change all the time, I would think. Yeah. Based on what you're doing at the time and based on how you're living, yeah. it would change. And But, I mean, also, I guess, what is my life's purpose also kind of suggests, too, I guess, like, your, who, who am I? Yeah. It's Maybe. a difficult question, because once, once you start asking, it's like a can of worms. Or a rabbit hole, because you can just keep on going. If you, I just always imagine these people who never ask, "What's my life purpose?" They just, they're just their life just is what it is. They just do what they do, and that's it. And they never ask these deeper philosophical questions. And I imagine life is somewhat easier for them on some level because they don't have this psychological torment of trying to figure out what exactly is my purpose, where am I going, what am I doing, are my efforts worthwhile? That's like literally. 
the point of every existentialist literature. <laughs> like, every <laughs> book written by an existentialist. Like, I mean, come on. Have you ever read Notes from Underground, right? You have, or The Idiot. A long time ago, yeah. Or, like, you know, The Stranger, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's people that think and are, it's like, that whole idea of consciousness as a disease, right? Mm -hmm. Or, like, the absurdist plays, like, um, like, rhinoceros and stuff. Like, you know, like, the idea, like, you know, I mean, the animal life is easier, isn't it? Or not thinking is easier. Not to say that, like, you know, if you don't think about these things, you're an animal. But, like, to say, like, you know, like, the life where you don't ponder those questions would be easier because you're just either doing what you're supposed to do or mm -hmm. you're you're not burdened by all the stress and suffering that comes with it, right? Yeah. Yeah, without a doubt. It is you don't have that... You don't have a future or a past. <laughs> yeah, to you worry about. The, the anxiety of the future and the depression from the past. It's, uh... it's amazing how depressed and anxious we are. Yeah. And that we're still alive. You mean you and me as a people? Yeah, just I, a both of us. I mean us. I mean, it's amazing how depressed and anxious we are all the time. Yeah. It's surprising. Mm -hmm. As a people, too. I think it seems to be getting worse. Mm -hmm. Especially in this country, man. It's getting... Yeah. Or, I mean, I'm sure it is everywhere. I shouldn't I shouldn't generalize just the United States, I guess. But, like, mm. it seems like it's getting worse, doesn't it? It definitely does. And I think it's because... I was watching City Slickers last night. Oh, that's a good movie. I know, right? I, I forever. Yeah, you watch it again because it's a completely different movie from when you watched it 20 years ago. Well, yeah, because I'm also 20 years older. <laughs> I can't believe yeah. that. I, fuck, I forgot about the movie entirely. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, and yeah. so Curly, the cowboy in that, is like the the secret to life is this. And he points his finger towards the sky. And Billy Crystal is like, what, your finger? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, no, one thing. You just do one thing and say fuck it to everything else. And then if you just... Because I think we get we get so distracted and fractured in what we're doing. Like everybody has so many pursuits and so many things going on and so many coals mm -hmm. in the fire that we're never able to actually focus on something enough to derive benefit from it to where we could get joy from it. But also when you have that much stuff going on it's just easy to you know it's funny i was actually i was talking about that with my uh students in my existentialism class mm -hmm. <laughs> last yeah. spring but the idea like you know with friendship right like you know social media and stuff people it's like more acquaintances i guess and it's like the it's the quantity that matters not quality always mm -hmm. right so people you're always trying to get more and more but you're also extending yourself in a wider area right and like you you do better like the idea of having like a really good friend that you like put time in the relationship invest in it right and you get a lot from it because you do that mm -hmm. and like when we and it's the same principle like you're talking about right when we we, we spread ourselves thin on all these different pursuits we're not really doing any of them mm -hmm. like with our full attention with our full self we're not really learning the skill fully and that's fine like it's good to have hobbies and shit you know and to do things like that but yeah, yeah, it's interesting. So, God, we have so many problems. Right? Holy so Georgia shit. asks, what is nothing and how to forgive? Those are the questions from Georgia. Now, I wonder why they asked. Interesting aside. What is what nothing? Is nothing. <laughs> yeah, interesting aside. So the number zero didn't exist for a long time. Yeah, it didn't. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, with the, the numerals that we know them. Well, there wasn't negatives either for a while, right? Yeah. yeah. But negatives actually came before zero. Oh, really? Yeah. No shit. Yeah, no, that is yeah. interesting. Yeah, negatives came before zero. And uh, the zero was actually apparently found in meditation. Oh. Like somebody contemplated the idea of zero. Of nothing. Of a number having no value. Or, uh, oh, that's interesting. So they, they contemplated the idea of nothingness or, neg or, 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 or like pure impartiality, I guess, or something. And then mm -hmm. the came void. up with a numerical expression of it. Yeah. Weird. That's kind of cool, though. Yeah. That makes sense. Kind of a recent... I wonder what, Edition. like, what is nothing I meant? I wonder what context they meant then. This is spiritual questions, right? What is nothing? What is no thing? Nothing. Yeah. Well, that's the other way to read it, right? What is no thing? Because I think when people read it, you read it differently when you read what is nothing versus what is no thing. You know, maybe they have a business down in Georgia called nothing. They might, and, yeah. And it's really popular and everybody's like, what? It's like the new Uber down in Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> called what is, nothing. What is nothing? Like, what is nothing? What is this? I keep seeing yeah. these advertisements for nothing. Yeah. The, uh, well, anyway, yeah. Yeah. Hawaii is Shinto reincarnation and Feng Shui. Do you, what do you think of reincarnation? Uh, I kind of hope it doesn't happen. 
Yeah. You know, the idea that you kind of <laughs> got to keep on going until you get it right. Because I know in life you have problems and you keep having these same problems until you address that issue and move on. And it's just like you spend a whole lifetime doing that. But then, like, you have more than a whole lifetime to do it. Yeah. Well, the beauty of, too, the beauty of life is you can also deny things, forget about them, and you can also kind of just ignore them. And in, in essence, sort of move on from them, even though you don't really, and you never deal with it. Reincarnation, you have to face yeah, that shit over and over. And, do it again, and, do it again. and it might be worse. Yeah. Right? Because if you, from what I remember correctly of the karmic cycle and all that, like if you, mm-hmm. if you do, you do poorly, bad, you might you have, come back as a rock. Yeah, you have to go back to the lower levels, mm-hmm. right? And like, presumably, human beings are the higher level, I guess, depending on how you look at it, so. Yeah. I guess you did something right before as a bug or whatever, but yeah. yeah. Anyway, Idaho s relationship between religion and science. Well, that depends. Idaho. Yeah, I guess they're trying to figure out. You know, science is kind of new. Religion's been around a lot longer. It has. It has. And so, science is sort of new. And especially, well, no, especially to like the. You know, it's crazy. Like I was just talking about this in the environmentalism class, and I feel like it's worth mentioning because it's interesting. But you know, it was like it was like in I think in 1850 that that idea that like the the point of science and technology is to dominate nature. That idea from the Enlightenment really took hold. Mm-hmm. Which also, I mean, look at the world around us right now, right? Like we use science and technology to literally wrestle nature to make it do what we want. And it's amazing because like you know, when you read a lot of environmentalists, like they argue, you know, like we could be doing something different with science and technology. We could be using it to try and like live harmoniously with the natural world right Mm -hmm. instead of constantly putting a wall between ourselves and the natural world and it would be interesting but it'd be totally different and it's a totally different way of thinking so it's like selling that point is also very hard but anyway yeah Yeah. just thought it's it's interesting point not using it as well as we could yeah and we're not getting the most out of it yeah yeah and i think you know the interesting part is they they both rely on faith you know, like in order, people, I mean, people understand that in order to have religion, you got to rely on faith somewhat. But science relies on faith too. Oh, yeah, it absolutely does. Because every scientific hypothesis is not true. It's just true until proven. It's the best answer wrong. we have. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's the best way to look yeah. at it. It's not, but it's and not a just, true, it's not fact in yeah. the absolute or objective sense. Yeah. You just have faith that it, because it's been proved true so many times, yeah. that it'll still hold true like gravity yeah or you have faith that it's because it's the best explanation we have to make sense of the world that it will continue to make sense of the world yeah like the theory of gravity stuff gets pulled towards bigger objects things fall well you know i always like that though about science because the one thing about the you know nietzsche loves like that a mindset too because it's like that that experimental mind where you you it is like a faith where you trust it because it's, it's been proven right but you're always open to the idea that it might be wrong so like there you always are open to the idea that it might need to be changed right later mm-hmm. and i think that's an interesting way to live because you kind of like y- you you prevent yourself from getting closed-minded in a way does that make sense mm-hmm. you stay open-minded and stay sort of more fluid in your yeah. living yeah yeah illinois asks why do bad things happen to good people Apparently, good people in Illinois are getting screwed. They're having trouble. <laughs> I don't know a lot about Illinois or any state, to be honest. I'm just I mean, shocked that like this is the top question that comes up on Google in terms yeah, of spirituality. It is interesting, you know. Why do good things? Yeah, because a lot of good people must be feeling bad in Illinois. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why good things happen to bad people or bad things happen to good people. I mean, well, bad things happen to bad people too. Yeah, that's true. But I always thought that like. Bad people were a lot more opportunistic than good people, <laughs> and also and also good people tend to have like the poor me mentality. Mm. Like bad people tend to not give a shit, and they'll just more do... egoistic. Yeah. yeah, and when when bad stuff happens, they'll say whatever. I'll just keep on doing until I get my way. Whereas good people will be like, ah, oh, why did bad things happen to me? I'm such a good person. Oh, uh, wallowing, like, kind of in it, yeah. whining and not really, like, yeah. moving forward and, yeah. 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 And also, also the expectation that there's some type of justice in the world. Yeah, yeah right? Well, that should happen to good people. That's like, the other issue, right, is that there is some, there's some cosmic system that balances it out somehow mm-hmm. when there clearly isn't. Or if there is, it's one we don't understand. And yeah. so, you know. <laughs> we don't have insight into it. 
Yep, Indiana, their neighbor, asks, when will the world end? Also searching for Hinduism and Confucianism. So, yeah, when will the world end? <clears throat> when will the world they end? I thought it was going to end so many times. Remember 2000? Yeah. When the, uh, yeah, the, uh, the Y2K, clock. right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But why... We thought the world was going to end because of that? I, I That's still confusing to me. We would have had technological well, issues. Yeah, it would have. <laughs> the world they, thought, they thought that all technology was going to crash. Oh, right. Didn't they think, like, I, at one point, didn't somebody, like, think that, like, uh, this is going back 20 years. Jesus Christ. Didn't somebody think that, like, the uh, nuclear weapons would have launched or something absurd? Yeah. And just nothing like, happened. Just like any computers would have just mm -hmm. failed at that point because they would have rolled back their clock because they didn't have yeah. they weren't planned for it. The other big one was 2012. Mm -hmm. Because Those. they had predicted the end of the Mayan calendar. Right. Right. Nicely yeah. forgetting that it's a fucking circle. Yeah. <laughs> <Right. edition. laughs> yeah. I think it's kind of a null question because, yeah. you know, if the world ends, like, for instance, in terms of, like, what we're doing to the environment, global warming, I mean, things aren't looking great for humanity. But if humanity ends... The world doesn't. The world doesn't. And the world actually goes better. Yeah. It does much better without we, humanity You know, here. it's crazy. That's the other thing, right? We could wipe ourselves out. And we could have another six. We could have the sixth extinction, so to say, right? But mm. life could life will still be around, and it might look very. We could have dinosaurs again. You don't know. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And look at, okay, the shortness of the time span that humans have been here, like a hundred thousand years versus yeah versus dinosaurs, which was like like two fifty million. Yeah, two hundred fifty yeah. million. Yeah. We're like a fucking nothing in Dropping comparison. In it's insane. Yep. They didn't get very far because they didn't have technology to dominate nature. Yeah. <laughs> that was their problem. Yeah. You know, it, yeah, you know, it's funny. I read this somewhere. I don't remember where, so I have no way to support this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Um, <laughs> we don't need evidence here. <laughs> you don't need any evidence for anything. No, but uh, I had read somewhere that, like, this is a long time ago, but that, that uh, every generation thinks the world's going to end during their time. Mm. Like, it has something to do with, like, importance the ego and, yeah totally, and the ego right like you know ego. like oh it's gonna be during our time that this this all falls apart because yeah. obviously right it would make sense that it's now because i'm here yeah. <laughs> and like you know yeah i want to see it's it it's crazy how much of a dominance the ego has like people a lot of people don't even realize it because they think of egoism they think of egoism as like i'm better than everyone else egoism. Ego, yeah like, like but there's the exact flip side of that egoism that ev I'm not as good as everyone else. Yeah, That's yeah. also egoism. It is, yeah. And it's so prevalent, but most people don't see it. No, it's amazing, though. It is. And, like, mm. it's it's always there, though. Because, you know, it's like self-preservation, right? It's always behind. But I'm just laughing because I saw Louisiana, but we'll get down to that in a little oh, bit. Oh, that looks awesome. <laughs> I can't wait to get there. Oh, that's great. Anyway, yeah. um, we'll move on, then. Yeah, so I was... Jainism. 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 Jainism, yeah. yeah. Oh, that was I. Wasn't that New Jersey, too? New Jersey also. Weird. Apparently pretty popular. Interesting. We'll have to look I, that up. Jainism is a form of Buddhism. Yeah. If I remember correctly, and I'm pretty sure that's right. Yeah. Yeah, we'll look it up. Kansas, now. Hinduism, Islam, and Quran. Hmm. Of Interesting. All of, in Kansas, of all places, I wouldn't right? have thought the that. Mo I would have thought the most You know what's funny, though? You know what's funny, though? You know what's funny, though? It's like the... Uh, you know, the Abrahamic religions is Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, they're all based on the same text, mm -hmm. essentially. Right. You know, you get the tack on, because you got the New Testament, you have the Quran. But they're all based on the same thing. And they have the same basic figures in them. It's interesting that they're so, you know... Against each other. Yeah, conflicting yeah. at times. Against and it is weird other. that they search that. I don't yeah, know. Kentucky asks, what do Muslims believe? Again, interesting Again. search from <laughs> it Kentucky. Is. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually quite I mean, it's, surprised. It's kind of nice if they're trying to learn more about people that are different from them. That's mm -hmm. a nice sentiment. I don't know if yeah. that's. I imagine that's what it is, we'll right? That sounds think, like curiosity, yeah, think innocently and justly. Yes. Yeah. Let's say, let's say, Absolutely. yeah. Okay, so here we go, Louisiana. Uh, so they say, they ask about Catholic <laughs> Church, how to pray the Rosary, and, and the important question: Is masturbation a sin? It is not. <laughs> and now you have your answer. That is the answer. Yeah. It's not. Mm -hmm. It would be absurd if it was. How many times have you seen your dog hump a bed? Right, exactly. You know, I Dolphins mean, jerk yeah. each other off. Dolphins do it. Monkeys do it. Yeah. I yeah. mean, everything does it. French bulldogs will actually do it with yeah. their hand. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's insane. Think yeah. about that. Yeah. So any animal, basically, that can, will. Yeah. So it can't be. That's a, that's a good logic. But does... In the Bible, though, does it say it's a sin? 
Oh, I can't remember. Yeah, missing. So, like, one, well, okay, one on. definition of sin is missing the mark. Yeah, one definition of sin is missing the and mark. And potentially, the mark was to procreate. Mm-hmm. Because if well, every, yeah, yeah, well, like actually, if no, everybody actually, was just masturbating all the time, then there would be there would be relatively little procreation. And I should also I should also say that too. Like from a like from like an Aquinas sort of like natural law theory, it is because. They only think that sex is moral when um, when procreation is possible. Mm-hmm. So when so that's why they don't like condoms, right? Because any type of intervention oh. m- means that through the like through the act of love, you're supposed to be able to create new life, right? And if, you, if that possibility is not there, well, then it's problematic. So masturbation would technically be a sin on that note, but I don't agree with that. <laughs> 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 That's my point. I just I had guess. this thought in my mind while you were saying that of all the the very religious girls who are like, I'm saving my virginity. You can do me in the butt. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> but well, you're still saving yourself, yeah. I guess. Maine, similar to California, has a very uh, suicidal uh, sentiment. I want to die, and then also carpe carpe diem. So, right. Hey. <laughs> just same exact thing, both sides of the spectrum. But you know what? They are two sides of the coin, right? Mm-hmm. You want to live life in the moment, and you also want to die. Day. Yeah, maybe that's like an acceptance of death because you're seizing the day and you're doing crazy shit. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I mean it's tough once you start contemplating your own mortality, then you realize you better start living because we were talking about suicide the other day. Yeah, yeah, because we've known a lot of people that have done it. Mm-hmm. Surprisingly, I feel like statistically we've known a lot of people that have yeah. done it. Yeah, a shocking number. A shocking number, yeah. and like it is weird. Like, and I know it is. It is a um, statistically, it's white males are also at a higher percentage. High Isn't that correct? Yeah. Yeah, and also statistically, way more people die from suicide than from coronavirus. And yeah. yet it doesn't get nearly the amount of publicity. No, and it should have more attention, really, because when we were talking about it too, it's, it, it is. It's like a. I understand it in certain cases. I absolutely do. I think like, like, like euthanasia, I, but I think that's something different though. Euthanasia is, that's mercy killing in a situation usually where it's medically necessary or like severe depression, you know, when, yeah. you, when there's no other way and your quality of life is miserable, but you know, it's final. There's no other options after that. So it's a tough yeah, one. Yeah. Unfortunately. It is. It yeah, is unfortunate. It's a permanent solution to a temporary problem most of the time. It is. Unfortunately. But, uh, on a lighter note. Uh, on a lighter night, no, Marilyn <laughs> asks, what is beauty? That's it's in nice. the eye of the beholder. <laughs> it is. Well, it's yeah, it's in the eye of the beholder. It's form. Who mm-hmm. knows, right? Yeah. I, beauty is an interesting... I've taken so many fucking philosophy classes on aesthetics, dude, and yeah. beauty is a funny concept because, like, if you ever... If you think about it logically, like, right, if you are studying art or looking at art and you define beauty... Well, you just, you inadvertently just mixed a lot of art, right? Mm -hmm. From being beautiful and stuff that people find beautiful. So it is, it has to be subjective because obviously, like, you know, you've been to a museum. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of stuff you'll find, you'll value, but you also value art for different reasons too. I think that's the other problem, right? Because you might value art for spiritual reasons. You might value art because of the skill involved. Like you look at the, the old Dutch masters and stuff like... I don't necessarily like all their paintings, but man, they're incredible. Like, mm-hmm. and they were creating all that stuff that they needed, yeah. all their materials. It's pretty impressive. Yeah. When I used to study pickup, I found something really interesting that uh, oftentimes people that you're attracted to are attracted to you as well. Like attracts like. And so even though you may think they're very attractive, somebody else might not, but they'll probably think you're attractive as well. Which is pretty cool. That is interesting. I thought that was also based on our pheromones, too, though. Yeah, that too. And because also, I think people it, look it, alike. You well, ever yeah. realize how people in relationships yeah. look alike? It's basically, they, they just like looking in a mirror, and it's like, ah, you're the closest thing to a mirror. Well, you want to fuck yourself, yeah. but you can't. <laughs> well, you can, but it's just not the same. Right. That's the whole masturbation problem. But, you know... Fortunately, it's not a sin. <laughs> yeah, thankfully. When you're when it's yourself, you're okay. Yeah. You're, you, you've kind of gotten around that whole problem. Mm-hmm. But what... <laughs> oh, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, well. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Massachusetts asks, "Is there life after death?" No. Yeah. Answered. Life Sorry, guys. Yeah, there might be. I don't know. I, Depends see- on, I don't think that. Well, no. I should say no because I don't think. If you mean by life, biological life, no. I don't think there's life after death, and I think that maybe is we're asking the question wrong, right? Mm-hmm. Like. Yeah. Yeah. I. W- I mean, working as a veterinarian, I get to see a lot of death. Like probably averaging one euthanasia a day 
<laughs> I'm not sure if that Woo! says much for my, <laughs> my skills as the a veterinarian. The practice is going really well, though. <laughs> yeah. But, uh... Everybody yeah. brings their animals there to die. Yeah. No. <laughs> I mean, once they're, once they're dead, they are dead. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing... There's, but it's like it's like the the spark, like the spirit leaves them. The body's still there. You know, it's well, it's interesting. You know, one I think if I this is again if I remember correctly, one of the ways to interpret the Greek word for soul is like life force. You know, like mm-hmm. the difference between a corpse and a living person. Ah, the soul. You know, like mm-hmm. it's the life force or whatever. But like, it is interesting because once something is dead, it's dead. And like you know, so to say that there's life after death, I think people one of the problems with that is like you imply like something similar to this. You know what I mean? And I think that's that's maybe not the right way to think of it. Whatever it is, maybe that's not correct. Because you're kind of like, you're assuming it's going to be the same thing or something similar or even a conscious self. And that's, you know, it's weird because yeah. we have this consciousness and it's like, it is so weird having consciousness, isn't oh, yeah. it? Like, totally. Because you have this sense of self, you have this identity, you feel like it's fixed over time. So why would it go away, right? But it's not fixed over time. It's changed dramatically. You just, you have that sense of, of like, sameness yeah. and it's very weird yeah and also where does that thing go that life force that spirit that spark whatever yeah because that could go somewhere else and it's i mean who knows you know like when you when you dream when you go to sleep at night yeah. and when you wake up where do you go in between there yeah because there's stuff happening and your conscious you self has lots going on yeah. right and you know it's it's yeah it's interesting what was it anaxiris said it was the noose mind yeah i don't know consciousness kind of Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. And like, how are is there a different thing for like li- like plants and animals than for people and whatnot? Hmm. Yeah. yeah, I heard a commercial the other day. By the way, this is totally on the side, but it was uh, we can edit it out. <laughs> but there was a, we won't. Not gonna do that. But it was about it was about a pet, uh, a place that does burials for pets in New Jersey. Uh-huh. I don't know the name, but it was funny because at the end of the commercial, they were like, "Let us help you bring your animal across that rainbow bridge." And I was like, isn't isn't the Rainbow Bridge, isn't that, that's Norse, isn't it? Uh, Mythology, probably. I think, isn't that like Thor? Yeah. The Rainbow Bridge, sense. right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we all know that from Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that we know that that's a good source. Yeah. Yeah, well, which is interesting. Well, hopefully it'll be one of the sponsors for the show. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Later on. <laughs> Brought to you by New Jersey Pet Cemetery. Pet Cemetery. Yeah. We'll uh, bring them back to life. Michigan asked, what is evil? And for that, you also got to ask, what is good? That is the problem, right? It's that flip side again. Two sides of the same coin. Is it a sliding scale, though? Yeah, it's totally subjective. Yeah, 100%. that's the there problem, There are some right? things that are that are thought of as, like, societal evils. So, like, in general, most people will say, yeah, that's evil. But, like, how many times have you been in an argument with someone, and you're like, I'm right, they're wrong, I'm good, they're evil. And they're yeah. probably thinking the same exact thing. Yeah, well, that's the problem, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Or, you know, you think of, like, I mean, anything. Think of, like, a, a war. You know, both sides think they're good. It would right. be fucking insane to think you weren't good <laughs> like, and doing the right thing and yeah. still going through with it. That would be crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So unless we're all insane, which we might be, yeah. I think that it is very subjective and it's very hard to pin down. It also mm-hmm. kind of depends on a tacit worldview, which is also sort of the issue. No. And, you know, evil depends on sort of a perspective and whole set of beliefs. So, you know, I don't know how we can define that on Google. <laughs> Yeah. I'm not criticizing the question. I just have <laughs> issues yeah. with it. Yeah, Minnesota looks up Paul the Apostle. Really? Do yeah. A lot of Minnesotians need oh, Paul for some know reason. about Paul. I always find good things from people named Paul. I don't then, know a lot of Pauls. Yeah. I only know three. Oh, uh, shit. I know some Pauls. Never mind. Yeah, because I know St. <laughs> Paul's. A lot of St. Paul's you know. Yeah. I forgot about them. Yeah. Mississippi cars go by mississippi asks is god is real bible what is love is god real bible so the bible i totally understand why they search that yeah Uh, is god real is an interesting one to it on the to search uh uh-huh um yeah i mean you know what you know what's interesting about that question i guess is that uh, humanity has like posited some type of thing right forever which is interesting and like you said science is much younger than religion and and belief but it's also a means to explain so i don't know it's a tough one because it kind of makes sense that we posit a god because we see what we're capable of doing and then it's like we can create the world sort of at least in our immediate world so we imagine 
a thing that could create in a broader scale. Mm-hmm. Like we get, we we can create babies. So we imagine something that could create us, right? Because it's like yeah. that whole chicken and egg problem, yeah. right? Where the hell did they come from? Yeah. And you can't have matter coming out of thin air. So you need yeah. something, right? And we so, imagine we're made in the likeness of God. Yeah. And we're yeah. supposed to create. I mean, but also like the the creation itself, like the the act of creating is some of the most pleasurable experiences you can have in life. Yeah, it's also like considered very divine, too, I think, in a lot of cases. Yeah. Like, you know... When you're what, being creative, when you're doing artistic stuff, when you're building something new, when you're making a podcast, when you're making love, all these creative acts, those are really fun, joyous And some of the things. most powerful things we can do, right? Yeah. And the most pleasurable things we can engage in. Yeah. Then I'm enjoying myself right now. And then there's destruction. Yeah, the, other, the other side of it. I've also yeah. done that. Uh-huh. For a long time, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. And then they ask, what is love? Yeah. Oh, man, I don't know. They have some strong questions in Mississippi. They do. They have some difficult ones. Yeah. Jeez, very, very general. <laughs> oh, yeah, my gosh. But... Missouri. Wait, what? <laughs> Missouri. Where yeah. in the Bible does it say that homosexuality is a sin? Man, Missouri. <laughs> um, Either they have a bunch of people aiming to come out of the closet <laughs> real soon. <laughs> Or a bunch of people who really want to know a reason why. A bunch of people wrong. in the DL that really want a reason to come out. They're like, oh, geez. Yeah. What are we supposed to do? Where does it actually say it? Show me the page, the number, cite it, annotate it. I need it. proof. I want to know. I think it, you know what's funny though? Here's the other interesting thing about that, right? You talk about like the Old Testament, the New Testament. These are books that were written, because we're talking about the Bible, right? These are books that were written a long time ago. Mm-hmm. Over a thousand years, thousand mm-hmm. plus years, depending on what you're talking about. A lot of these things that they say were also kind of important because people were, communities were being harmed. Like the shellfish thing, right? Like, you don't, they didn't want people to eat certain things because they were getting sick from it. Right. So it wasn't necessarily that they were saying like, you know, times change, sometimes things have to change with it, right? And these recommendations were a recommendation for a community to survive at the time Uh and to thrive. And so like, if you think back to like, you know, I was I watched I was watching a show about like ancient Rome and they were saying like these these big cities in ancient Rome they only had like four or ten thousand people. Mm. Think about New York's got what like ten million or something? Mm-hmm. So you think about these small communities and like, yeah, okay, so you know, doing certain things might limit the amount of people and stuff like that. So maybe they would say that it's wrong, but it doesn't you know, times change so maybe these things should change too, I guess. Yeah. Is one way to look at it. And it seems like in all of the the sexual rules in the Bible, yeah. They all want to promote procreation. Yeah, that's what they want to do. Because the things that are immoral or wrong are masturbation, bestiality, homosexuality, all of those you participate in, you will not be able to create life. Well, nobody wants to have sex with somebody who just had sex with a sheep. You know, I mean, that's just, that's, that's usually true. Yeah. You have sex with one sheep and then they call yeah, you sheep and then all the of rest sudden, of your life. All of a sudden, you're targeted with <laughs> a big thing on your back. No, the, uh, it's interesting, too, because you know what's funny? Like, the Greeks, you know, the Greeks, I mean, they, they practice homosexuality a lot. And a lot of it, did you know, it was to protect the actual lineage, like the name? I did not. So, like, if they, if for instance, like, you know, if, if you knew that your husband was out sleeping around if he's sleeping around with men he can't have any other kids so you don't have to worry about the family line you don't have to worry about your children you don't have to worry about inheritance or nothing like that you know there's no issue go figure so if they want to go screw around at least if they screw around with other guys go figure hey i had no idea solve the problem i had no idea yeah montana asked what happens when you die so a lot of people are all about what happens after death it's interesting i wonder too you know nation i i and this is something i wonder a lot but there's no answer to it i guess right now but i always wonder if that's like People have asked these questions, obviously, forever. So it's always going to be something we ask. Mm-hmm. We can't get around that. Because it's the unknown, right? It's the big unknown. One thing we know is that we die. We don't know what happens after, right? Yeah. That's the issue. And we're born. We're just thrown in. It's like, you know, like the existentialists say, right? You're thrown into existence. You only know one thing. Oh. You're going to die. I kind of look at it like similar to what happens when we go to sleep. Yeah. Kind of like, or, you know, or even like, I always thought of it too, like the state before I was born, mm-hmm. right? I too. Just that. That's yeah. it. You know, and like, I mean, in a certain sense, it's peaceful. <laughs> right? Because yeah. I wasn't bothered by it yep. until I was thrown into this shit. I know. Yeah. Arguably until <laughs> I was like four and I actually had <laughs> memories, but whatever. That's besides ne- the point. Nebraska asks, what is hell? Interesting. Nebraska? Yeah. I think that depends on... I think a, because they have really cold, brutal winters there. You think? They're like, is this hell? Is this hell or is yeah. hell hot? I'm confused. Yeah. Nevada is how to <laughs> hypnotize someone. Well, there's a drug... Yeah. Whatever that. What is that called? Do you remember? 
The, the zombie drug uh, or whatever. Bath salts? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I wasn't thinking that you were going to say Rohypnol too, and I wasn't thinking yeah. of that either. No, no, there's that one that they like, I know there's that one that's like a, I, I know that I've seen it in TV and stuff where they like, it like makes somebody like a zombie. Oh. And they can like, and they forget, kind of like being roofied, I guess, oh, but yeah. different. Like forget you, me nots. Sort of, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. <Forget laughs> yeah, yeah that's good. you can uh, you can like move around and stuff and all, and they just don't remember. It's interesting. Hmm. Anyway, so there's yeah. that. And then, uh, but I've been hypnotized. Have you been hypnotized? I don't think so, but yeah. maybe. Yeah. When were you, were you hypnotized? At, you were hypnotized in high school, weren't you? During that uh, thing? No, no, no. I actually went there to quit smoking. Did it? It worked. Yeah. Wow, man, I should do that. Damn. Yeah, 100%. I've never tried that. Yeah, Frank I should Perry. try that. Yeah. Really? Yeah. He will hypnotize you to quit smoking. And wow. it works. Yeah. It works? Lifetime guarantee, too. Really? go back, he'll do it again. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. I should try that. Amazing. I never, I did not know that. We'll put links down in the uh, the comments for anybody who's interested. Yeah. yeah. I got to quit smoking, dude. It's yeah. expensive and it's not... Yep. The health thing, <laughs> I don't know how much I care about that that much. But, but I mean, it's it, gotten it's super concerned. expensive. Yeah, has it? Oh yeah, oh cigarettes. Yes, I thought you said he did. I thought you were talking about the guy hypnotizing. No, I was like, why would his prices change? Yeah, no, cigarettes are insane, dude. You figure ten dollars. They figure ten dollars a day. Multiply that by three sixty-five. That's thirty-six fifty a year. That's insane. Yeah, by thirty years, that's a one point five million dollar habit you got. Yeah, that's insane. People wonder why they aren't millionaires. I know, right? Yeah, I could have been. I just smoked cigarettes. Yeah. Anyway, New Jersey, like that other place. What was that? Iowa. We're all thinking the same, Jainism. apparently. Yeah, yeah, again. Jainism, Jainism. Jainism, whatever. Jainism, it doesn't matter. As long as you pronounce it sort of and people can right. look it up later. It's more phonetic, I think, that matters. Yeah. We'll put a link to this article in wow, the Wow, New Mexico's too. got a lot of things. Yeah, purgatory, astral projection, Jehovah's Witnesses, and how to suicide. How to suicide. It's a uh. weird way to phrase the question. <laughs> <laughs> how to grammar. I guess, yeah. <laughs> I guess they were looking for a how to. Mm. on suicide, right? Would that be the right way it's, to interpret that? It's shocking that? that people actually need kind of instructions it's for not it, hard. look it up. Yeah. No, I know. It's actually surprising. I've always wondered that. There's so many ways to do it and it's a shame. It's not difficult. That's yeah. the, You know, that's the other crazy part if you really think about it. Like, mm-hmm. we have this life and it is so easy to get rid of it. Yeah. Yeah, that's I the mean, unfortunate like, part. You know, it's like, it really is. I mean, you could just walk out in front of a car or something. I don't need mm-hmm. to give people ways to do it. Yeah, we don't but need, you're not we gonna need do to do that. different ways. But the point is, is it's simple. Mm-hmm. But, okay, so you have purgatory, which I always found an interesting the best, concept. The best thing to do if you're ever typing how to suicide is call the suicide prevention hotline. Yes, online. call them. Simple as yeah. that. They actually have a text that's service, too, now, I believe. Yeah. I know there's one in New Jersey. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, contact somebody. That's all you got to yeah. do. Contact someone, talk to them first, and then go from there. You can always make that decision later. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to do it now. Exactly. New York, how to live forever in <laughs> Daily is, Horoscope and Torah. Not surprising. Actually, like, none of those are surprising yeah, for New so York. This is so typical for New York. I feel like it is, right? Mm-hmm. You live in New York, you want to live forever. Yep. Keep conquering the world, I guess, with <laughs> your fucking $80 million and apartment. Superstitious with the Daily Horoscope. Yeah. <laughs> and it's the largest Jewish population outside of Israel. It Looking really is, yeah. Looking for the Torah. That all makes sense. North, North Carolina, Carolina, no kidding. What is consciousness? I feel like I could say something negative about that question about North Carolinians or positive. I don't know which way to go with it. <laughs> well, we're trying to get rid of as many listeners as we, we can. We are. I don't yeah. want to know. That is interesting. That's an interesting question, though, because I what is consciousness? How would you define it? It's the... Uh, is it just the, self-awareness? So much. Entity, it's like It's like the, the idea that I am able to... That I have thoughts about myself. Right, so it's, it's a subject experiencing the world, right? It's something with self-awareness of some mm-hmm. sort. Yeah. I always found it interesting that certain animals, if you put them in front of a mirror, will identify with the image in the mirror as, them, as themselves, whereas mm-hmm. other animals don't recognize it. So yeah. like, an, it, like elephants, if they, if they take like a lipstick and they mark their head and they look in a, the water or a mirror and see their reflection, they'll try and get the mark off because they know it's their face huh. or their head. Wow. But like a, you know, I've seen my cats and my dogs freak out because of the <laughs> mirror because they think it's like another animal. They don't right. recognize what they look like. Yeah, it's kind of interesting when you think like what what is different about them, right? Because I still should, think, should we use the mirror test as a consciousness test? I don't know. No, but see, that's the other that's the other interesting thing is I don't think that's a good consciousness test because I think it's it's a test for for recognition of self, right, in a mirror. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it's a recognition of one's own reflection. But the interesting thing that I, 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 this is where I fall on, I'm not sure about it, is I guess that 
I've seen my dogs and cats also express what I would consider emotions of some sort, not to personify too much, right? Like, you know, I've gotten the cold shoulder from my cat, the, the one Calvin when I first, uh, the first time we left for four days mm -hmm. and came back, he was very upset with us for having left, right? And yeah. like, so they show emotional responses of some sort, but they're not, so maybe it's like, I mean, I would say that consciousness goes on a scale of, it's a degree, right? So mm -hmm. it's like a sliding scale. Same with yeah. intelligence. It's all a matter of degree and, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know. That was a long answer. Not really answering anything. Go ahead. All right. We'll go. Well, North Carolina, you have your answer there. Yeah, it's a good one, though. It's a North good question. North Dakota looks up Lutheran Church and Trinity. I don't have much to say about that either. Yeah. <laughs> Ohio, Ohio, another one that asks, does God exist? Wasn't that or no, is God real with Mississippi? Yeah. So Ohio and Mississippi, you guys, should, you guys should check it out together, I guess. Yeah, you could be sister states. Yeah. Uh, Oklahoma, what religion is Donald and Melanie Melania Trump? None. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I think it would be... Um, well, they're Christian, I guess, technically, right? I was going to make a joke about being capitalist. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, religion. that's what they are. They yeah. really are capitalists. I mean, that's he held religion. the Bible upside down in the fucking picture. Yeah. I mean, he, he probably had never held one in his life. Right. He was like, what is this thing, a book? <laughs> no, anyway. Yeah. Um, I think capitalism is his religion. It's low-hanging fruit. Yeah. Oregon, Muhammad, and Muslim. Interesting. Right? These these places are asked. Uh, Oregon, that's interesting. I thought yeah. ah, it doesn't matter, I guess. But Pennsylvania, what is heaven like? What am I doing with my life? Ooh. I don't know, Pennsylvania. Ooh. Our, our one of our next door neighbors. Yeah, right. What is heaven like? You know, they did have that story of like a few people who had near death experiences and got to see what heaven was like. I think there was that book is heaven for real or something like that. There was something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I but there's read, also that, um, that, there was also the thing too, though, that I had heard that, um, they said, you know, when you, um, when people have a near death experience and they, and they say like their life flashes before their eyes or you get the common experience of like the bright light and all, yeah. there was something to do with, uh, some, I, I know scientists had said there was some sort of, um, hormone or something released. Yeah. Like DMT. It's sort of, like yeah. It's something, it's something at the very, like when your body knows it's in like that, that moment, I guess that it releases this and it, and it has a very like euphoric, very sort of hallucinatory aspects to it. And mm -hmm. it, so you get these sort of commonalities in experience yeah. and it raises questions, you know, because again, you could say, well, okay, maybe it's all biological. Maybe it's just a physical thing, right? Like it's a physical basis for something, our mental, our mental projections, right? Or it could be that, yes, that happens and this is separate. So who knows? I mean, that's the other issue, I guess, right? Yeah. So, yeah. but I mean, I guess what is heaven like? You also, it's the assumption that you're going to get there too, I guess, right? <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> Well, to see if it's worthwhile to try and get there. Well, that's why they're also yeah. asking, what am I doing with my life? Yeah. Oh, God. Right. How do I get there? Yeah, right? Uh, that's such a common question. What am I doing with my life? I know. You know what? I, I honestly think it's due to social media and all of this stuff. Because back in the day, you work on a farm. You wake up. You, like, you like work yourself to the bone. You don't have time to think about these things. And then uh, when you're not working you don't have all these external sources of all these people with like luxury yeah. yachts and perfect bodies and all this different stuff thrown in your face constantly yeah so you don't even have these questions like you weren't even aware working, of it when you're done working you collapse in a chair you grab yeah. a cold beer and then you just sit and not, watch not to mention too you might have a palace or something but it'd be a far off thing you never really see it yeah. you don't see really what's inside once in a while you know it's like you don't have the same sort of constant affirmation and confirmation of it all the time mm -hmm. and it's interesting too you know it's like if you think about it too like life for most people probably you know a hundred years and more in the past most of their day was probably spent around food making food getting food growing food yep. figuring out how they're gonna eat yep. like now food's such an afterthought it's like we have all this goddamn time oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and it's yeah. like we struggle of course we do yeah. Dude, we, we have food in excess. We progress so fast in the last hundred years. We're flying yeah. in the air. Yeah. I and mean, when you really think about it, we all carry supercomputers in our pockets. We're flying in the air. It's insane. Uh -huh. We don't even have to remember stuff. Yeah. And we're and we're missing out on the things that are enjoyable. Yeah. Like I was listening to Henry Ford's autobiography in the first chapter of that he was talking about the creation of machines and how people used to toil out in the fields all day long. And the whole idea behind creation of machines 
was so that people would have more time to enjoy nature. Yeah. Because we're surrounded by this beauty, but we're working so hard we don't have any time to we enjoy it. We didn't have it. any time to actually appreciate yeah. it, and now we have that time, and what do we do with it? Watch we, Netflix. Yeah, we watch Netflix, and we don't go outside, or we watch a documentary on beautiful places yeah. instead of going out there. And if you go out there, you get away from all of it. It yeah. feels good. Go outside. Yeah. That's what we're saying. Go outside. Yeah, you know, it's funny, too. Like I don't know. It's interesting. It is so... Why is life so complicated? Mm. That's what I would have searched. Mm. It, 42. <laughs> <laughs> right? It is. Yeah. It always is. Yep. Pa- anyway. So Rhode Island uh, is past life regression, horoscope daily, and nihilism. Oh, I love nihilism. Yeah. Did you know, past life regression is interesting because I, I have to say I am... It's funny. I don't know why I am so... I am like... I guess I'm like... One of those people that I'm willing to believe in stuff like I, I I love like stuff about aliens. I think past life regression is really interesting. I think like you know ghosts and stuff like yeah, like that kind of stuff. So I'm willing to believe in all that just because I think I like the idea of it. Mm-hmm. I've also read some interesting accounts like with the uh, who was that um who was the guy that they call the uh, the the American or United States whatever like Nostradamus. Do you know what I'm talking about? No. He was like in the 50s or 60s. He like predicted a bunch of stuff, but he put himself in trances. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> oh man, I feel like Never I should give the name. Now I feel bad. You can look it up. But he did pass. He had past life regression stuff too, and like other lives, experience of other lives. What the hell was his name? Eh. Yeah. Well, I mean, if we do have some, if that life force has some type of continuum, that's the other thing, right? Then it would make sense you'd well, be able to do that. Yeah. Well, this if is the you other. Can remember. Yeah. This is the other interesting thing is if there is if that life force continues even if the conscious self doesn't, there must be cases where something happens and that individual has some memory of these events, right? Because yeah. they were, in each moment you're alive, you are conscious. So even if you're not on the in-between, mm-hmm. you know, once you're in a body again, once that soul joins the body, boom, consciousness. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. how it works. South Carolina wants to know who is your soulmate? North Carolina. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they deserve each other. They really do. South Dakota, mortal sin, Lutheranism. Those are separate uh, questions. Right. <laughs> Tennessee, what is truth? Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Hmm. It's a, it's really relative, Tennessee. It depends on a standpoint. Right. That's the problem. I mean, I think that. I don't think there is absolute truth. I think there's only truth from a perspective. Mm-hmm. Relative truth? Well, what's true, which, yeah, because think about it. To say anything's true involves having a standpoint, having a point of view on something. Mm-hmm. We don't know anything in and of itself, so we have to, we have, to have a point of view. Now, yeah. You can get better ones and worse ones, I think, but you know, mm-hmm. yeah, it's difficult. Yeah, like for instance, math. All of math depends upon the axioms. Mm-hmm. Like when you add numbers, the additive, the subtractive, and all the different axioms that you have there. Yeah. And so, like, if we say is two plus two equal to four, yes, that's true based upon the axioms of math. Yeah, it's based on a certain perspective, right? You're taking a perspective on this situation, namely mm-hmm. from mathematics. Texas asks, "Why does God hate me?" <laughs> and are we alone in the universe? Jeez. Should we just give generic answers to all these? Because I would say, well, (laughs) obviously, and yes, we are. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I would argue counterably, does God hate me? No. No. I would think the exact opposite. God can't hate you. I would think, are we alone in the universe? Have you ever seen X-Files or something like that? Yeah, no, come on. We're not alone. Also, just statistically, you know, it's funny because, like, they talk about the alone in the universe. Things are so far apart in the universe, and you have to have a reason to come here. So it's like, I highly doubt that we're alone. There's definitely other life out there, but it's so far away that even if they were super advanced, what's their motivation for coming all the way out here? Right. Especially when you're talking about, even at light speed, you're talking about thousands of years in certain cases or Mm -hmm. more, you know? It's like, that's a long time. Mm -hmm. So even if they did, they might have missed humanity altogether. That's the other problem. We haven't been around very long. Yeah, very short time. Yeah. And then the other question of, you know... What was the other one? Does, like, why does God hate me? Yeah. God doesn't hate anything. It's so surprising that yeah. Texans would ask that. I always yeah. thought the Texans were like... Uh, Very... Um, God-fearing and I'm awesome. Yeah. I thought that was Those like two things usually go together. Yeah. yeah. Well, the Lone Star State. Yeah. But you know, it's interesting too, because like, yeah, God definitely doesn't... At worst, God thinks of his, crea- his or her, its creation, like we think of a hammer. Yeah. You know? Maybe I it's useful. I don't get the analogy. Well, like if you create something, right? Uh-huh. You either... You either find it valuable because you create it, so you, God wouldn't hate, right? Mm-hmm. Or it's just a thing that you made and you don't really care. Okay. So it's either indifference yeah. or care. I yeah, don't yeah. think hate doesn't make any sense. Yeah. See, I think it's I think it's our interpretation of it 
Because like if well, you yeah, look that's back, obvious. if you look back <laughs> through your life, like the the dots don't connect looking forward, but they almost always connect looking backwards. You make them and connect. like and like, yeah. yeah, yeah, and all those terrible things that happened. After a while, you can kind of see a reason for them happening. Yeah, now, that's, yeah, I think that's part of it. I think the other part is that we're just not patient enough to work on God's timeline. No, like, we're not. Maybe, maybe God's timeline is super slow, but we want stuff now. And because of that, we're like, why does he hate me? Why is he not giving? I asked for that last week. We know why do I yeah, not have that Yeah, you know what's yet? interesting? It's also like the question, like, you know, because a big question for, like, uh, uh, theologians in, like, the Middle Ages, and I mean, actually, all times, I guess, was, like, why do bad things happen, right? If God's all good, omniscient, beneficent, whatever, why does God allow bad things? And there's a couple different interpretations of that. But, like, you could say, well, okay, there are examples for people right so that they do the right thing and they learn how to act and if we have free will it is still up to us to a certain point the other side of that though too is that well if we're talking about god's sense of time which is the entirety of everything we just have a very narrow perspective if our 10, lives are short years of infinity is and, and, not yeah, a very long yeah, time or or 50 or 100 years of infinity is, human zero, life, is yeah. nothing yeah a human life is nothing compared to the total timeline mm-hmm. so if god's working on the total timeline you know, we yeah. just, that's like looking out your window for one second and making a judgment about the quality of your neighbor, you know, like, or something yeah. insane like that. You're making a yeah. flash judgment without looking at anything. Mm, that's a good, that's a good uh, perspective. Yeah. So Utah, kind of similar to Oklahoma, they want to know about the Trump's religion, what religion is Melania Trump, and then they also ask Mormon stuff, and am I happy? How That's an I, interesting question. To Google. Yeah. <laughs> you know you know what always bothered you, me? Uh, yeah, well, was that, okay. Uh, people, uh, when, I'm, when I'm busy doing stuff and somebody asks, like, how are you doing? Or are you feeling good? Or are you happy? And I'm always like, I was until you asked that question and now I have to think about it. Yeah. Like, you know, like, when, when I'm immersed in something and doing it, there's, like, never any question about that. But then... When you Once stop you focus and you on think it. about it, then, yeah. you, then you can either choose reasons to be happy or you can choose reasons to not be happy. And you can always find validation for the You know what's reasons. funny? I always think that, like, like, whenever I talk to you, right, like a good friend or someone I love, I always think of them as, like, who are the people that when they ask how am I doing, I would answer honestly. Do you know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. like a good criteria. Because yeah. most people, when they ask how are you doing, it's a social thing. Yeah. Right, so it's just like I'm good because it's not. They're not really asking how are you doing, right? They don't necessarily care how yeah, you actually are. And we should totally change that we as a should. culture. We because should give it, it a bit. Throw, it completely throws off the whole actual empathy of caring yeah, about it how does. somebody's doing. It does, and because, because we don't really, so- you don't want to know. It's a, yeah. it's a generic question. You're just supposed to say fine. Yeah, and, and it's like on. you know, you ask, you ask the person ch- when you're getting, you're in a convenience store, you ask them how they're doing, like. You know, well, you don't care. You yeah. want to get out of there. You don't yeah. even care if they answer. It's a, yeah. it's a social. F- you just a- do what the Hawaiians do. Just say mahalo or something. like Yeah, that. just something yeah, short just, and sweet and yeah. get out of there. What up? No, we should change that though. I think yeah. people should be more honest. But you know, that again though, I think it's a good criteria for you know finding out who you're close to. Who are you? Who can you be honest with about that? Well, anyway, right. Vermont looks up chakra meditation and Buddhism. Do they? Do they do? Interesting. Wow, they're yeah, very... They're a bunch uh, of granola people up in yeah, Vermont. Right, yeah, right. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I forgot about that. You're right. Yeah. Virginia, yeah. what is knowledge? Is time travel possible? Oh, well, what is knowledge is definitely a question for epistemology, and that's a whole field of philosophy. That's a difficult yeah. one. What, um, what do you... Yeah, what do you know? I mean, what is, All well, that I know is that I know nothing. Yeah, right? I mean, Socrates said it best, mm-hmm. right? The only thing that I know is that I know nothing. The other question is, too, is what do you mean by knowledge? Like, is it like that I know that I'm wearing like a blue shirt today or you know, you know is that not that's like a fact that's, yeah. a, that's an empirical fact is yeah. that knowledge is that you know yeah there was a quote that I heard a while back that said to know and not to do is not yet to know because there's also a difference between intellectual knowing and actually and practical not practical yeah. Yeah. well you know Aristotle said that you know you don't know something until you can teach it mm. Which is interesting, right? Because you, you might intellectually know it, but unless you can actually impart it to others, mm. do you actually know it? You know, and like, but that, that is a good point though, right? The whole issue of, you know, like, are you actually putting into practice these things? And you know what's funny? I think about that a lot too. Like, knowing what to do with our lives, and I think most of us have a pretty good sense of it, we just don't act on it so often and like the answers so are many, usually simple yeah because the answers are simple but we want they're it to not be, easy we want it to be more complex yeah they're difficultly they're difficult in their simplicity mm-hmm. and it's like we want it to be more complex we want it to be more profound and it isn't always you know and that's just it and like yeah. you said like 
when you're engaged in doing something, you're usually okay because you're focused mm-hmm. on it and you're you're living you're you're actually living life. Right. You're active, right? Yeah. The problem is when we sit around all the time, which is why getting out in nature and stuff is a good thing. Mm-hmm. Going back to that point. Yeah, but the simple answers. I mean, if you ask probably anybody in the United States, which is probably one of the most obese countries in the world, uh, <laughs> probably any. If you ask anybody, how do you lose weight? They would have a pretty good answer, and yeah. most of the time they would be right. Yeah, and, and that's the crazy part, right? Yeah. And then, do you want to? And they're like, yeah. And then, are you? No. Of course but, not. No. You know, it's funny too. It's like, well, it's like the United States, right? We we are the. We're only 300 and some million people, right? But we are the number one users of pharmaceuticals. And what's interesting is a lot of those are classified as lifestyle drugs, which are drugs that you can take in lieu of doing changing your lifestyle, right? So like yeah. if you have like high cholesterol, blood pressure, you can take Lipitor. a pill, right? You can take a pill or you can go exercise and change your diet. Yeah. And everybody, most people opt for the pill because then you don't have to change anything, mm-hmm. right? It's easier, Yeah. which is interesting because is it easier in the long run? Yeah, I guess not. I guess not, but well, you know, yeah. it's it's the whole instant gratification we deal with. Yeah, that's the other nowadays. issue, right? It's that We're immediate We're a society of instant gratification with next day delivery with Amazon. By the way, I'm hoping all these people <laughs> will pick us up as sponsors. Yeah, Lipitor, <laughs> Amazon, stuff. New Jersey Pet Cemetery. Yeah, right. All it wasn't that; stuff. it was something yeah. else. But whatever, we'll get there. Yeah, that would be really nice of them. Yeah, right. Yeah, it would be great. And then mm-hmm. uh, let's see, Washington. Oh yeah, Virginia also asks: Is time travel possible? Oh, I think. I mean, I'm under the impression that anything is possible. Yes. It just hasn't been, like, done and replicated yet. Yeah. Everything, I think, I agree with you. I think everything's possible. Time travel is interesting because people always get caught up in all these, like, hypothetical uh, paradoxes with time travel. Yeah. But it depends on how you look at it, right? Because if you are the one time traveling, you're still on the same line. Right? You never changed, really, your line. Yeah. Because that was all part of it, but whatever. We don't right. need to get into that. And, and not to mention, I mean, it could already be happening right now. Yeah, we could actually be in it, time right? Tra- yeah, time travel could already be happening. Parallel universes could already be happening. And there's just all these complex timelines going on. Or like Elon thinks, right? We could be in the Matrix. I would think that. I mean, that I wonder that sense. sometimes, right? Yeah, because all you know, the time. You all think about like time. how good virtual reality and stuff is now? Yeah. It's insane. Yeah, right? Like, oh my God, it's so good. And it's like, yeah, it's crazy. Like, we could totally be in it right now. Mm-hmm. That would be a good episode. Yeah, is virtual do. reality... Or do we live in virtual reality? Ooh, and is virtual reality matrix? real? Anyway, yeah, go, we'll, we'll go write on. that down after this. And we won't, uh, but we will. Washington <laughs> asks, how to be a better person. Ooh. Atheism is unstoppable. Wait, what? That's is that a question? question? <laughs> but, <laughs> atheism is unstoppable. <laughs> they're, question. They're just, they're just like... Uh, that's Atheism weird. Is they should have put comma right. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> what? Isn't what do it? You think? It's unstoppable, right? Once Atheism. you start on that path of atheism, you cannot yeah, stop no that train. No back. No it's turning difficult. back. Where is this? Washington. Washington State. Oh, we're getting through these, huh? Yeah. Yeah, it's good. How to be uh, a better person? They also want to know that. Now, how to be a better person? An question. It is an important question. It's also, you know, man, I've read so many books on the good life and ethics, and like. It really is self-control, I think, is a big part of it. And, like, you know, just being more aware of who you are and, and being more self-reflective. And it's not easy. That's the problem yeah. we were just saying, right? Simple yeah. things, but very difficult to execute. Yeah. And it's just, like, little small changes. Yeah. Like, everybody's looking for the big thing that's going to do it, and it's not. It's, it's not. It's a bunch of, like, little small changes and just doing the, yeah, it's the a, small stuff consistently. It's a bunch of little stuff that cu- cumulatively, right, adds up to better and, like, I think a big part of that too is also being more open and more, you know, more careful too. Think more before you talk and act. Mm. That's basically, I think, a good one to do too. Mm. Get around those biases and whatnot. Yeah, that's one of uh, Ben Franklin's thirteen virtues: is silence. Yeah. You know. Well, they say too, you know, like, well, like I was just heard a thing the other day on implicit bias, you know, and all these things, and they were saying too, you know, like if you just stop somebody from acting or saying something immediately, they actually are able to effectively get around their implicit biases a bit. Hmm. Not all the time, but there's a percentage increase because they've stopped and thought instead of just acting, right? Because if the implicit bias is coming from some place inside that's not necessarily intel- like in- in- intelligence or mm-hmm. intellect, right? That thinking about it, you know, helps. Huh. Yeah, so anyway, think. Washington, D.C. asks or looks up Pisces, Sagittarius, Scorpio, Capricorn, Cancer. So apparently they're very interested in 
horoscope. Apparently that's all they're interested in. Yeah, right? <laughs> Literally that's it. Yep. Okay, well we can leave that. West Virginia, what is Scientology and how to kill yourself? For wow. some reason, those kind of make sense together. Some yeah. two other didn't someone else ask about? Yeah, somebody asked like uh, how to suicide. New Mexico. That was New Mexico asked how to suicide, and, and somebody Virginia, didn't somebody else how to kill yourself. Oh, and yeah, 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 and Scientology is interesting. You know, you can get the Scientology book if you really want to. It's, mm -hmm. I mean, it's interesting. It's very sci-fi. I mean, yeah. it, which is kind of implied, I guess, in the name. Yeah. I guess they're interested in that. Yeah. You know, I heard things about West Virginia, and it's fun making all these generalizations. It is. They don't have to be true. No, they're but not like, at that's all. Where, that's apparently where all the serial killers go and everything down in West Virginia. That's what I heard. Oh, from I don't the know East Coast? True. I guess, I mean, you know, I guess people say that, though, it's because... It's an easy place to go hide West out. West Virginia has, like, the mountains and stuff, mm -hmm. and it's like, you know, when you're from, like, New Jersey and stuff, where it's very crowded, yeah. it's like hiding is, like... I mean, you could go to Pine Barrens, I guess, and hide, right? Oh, but dude, like, there's tons of area. You there. could go to West Virginia, and there's a lot of area, and there's these small towns. I think that's why people say it. Mm. You know, it's like being out in the Midwest and going to these towns yeah. with like very few people. It's amazing. Yeah. Wisconsin Lutheran Church, and then Wyoming Voodoo L. Ron Hubbard Yin and Yang. Hey, look at Wyoming asking about very different religious perspectives. And they spell voodoo wrong, by yeah, the way. Yeah, they do. They spell it V-U-D-U. Which is interesting also. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's not... Maybe we're think we're thinking of like voodoo. Maybe that's something else. Is there uh -huh. a thing that's wait? Uh -huh. Is is there a thing that's voodoo. be? Is that like a video service? Voodoo. Uh, Actually, I, I think that is a video service. Well, why would it be under spirituality then? Because this is probably using an algorithm, yeah. and maybe the algorithm mistake. made a mistake. Yeah, mistake. <laughs> that's a possibility. Yeah. Alan Hubbard is interesting though too. Yeah. I wonder if they wanted Scientology or they just wanted like his life story. Yeah. So those are the most popular queries by state. Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, that, that was fun. A pretty good episode. Yeah, that yeah. was fun going through. That was that, a lot so. of fun. We'll do this again with uh, more questions, maybe more queries and stuff, and see what we can find. Yeah, yeah, but we'll be back every week with another episode. So if you do enjoy this, like it, subscribe. And, yeah, uh, like we'll it, subscribe, and we'll be back. Absolutely. All right. Good talking to you, Danny. Good talking to you, Randy. All right. Peace, peace. Later.